Hello, my name is Mike Henry, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how I found and developed my personal painting style. Um, first thing I'd like to do is uh, mention a couple quotes from some artists that I like. First one is Edward Hopper. Great art is the outward expression of an inner life in the artist, and this inner life will result in his personal vision of the world. And also, Albert Dorn. Art is the reflection of the personality of the creator. So let's talk about how I got started. I actually started late in life. I was uh, about 43 years old. I had two young daughters, married and two young daughters, age three and age one. Um, we were, my wife and I were adding on to our house. We had some rental property. I was a UPS driver. Basically, um, I don't think I slept much then. But what I'd done is I had given up all my fun things to do. I like playing hockey and some other things so that I could be a good husband, good father, and uh, what was happening was I would wake up in the morning, go to work, come home, have dinner, play with the kids, go to bed. The next morning, wake up, go to work, have dinner, play with the kids, and go to bed. I kind of felt like I was a cog in the machine. And I thought, man, there's got to be a little more to life than this. And uh, for a while, I thought maybe I'm going through a midlife crisis. But at 43, I'm thinking I'm way too young for that. So finally, I did go see a friend of mine who's a counselor. And we just kind of sat down and talked about few things and um, he said Mike you, you've got to find something that you like to do like a hobby and just not feel guilty about taking away from your family and, and just do it otherwise you're gonna crash and burn so I walked out of his office and went to Barnes and Noble grabbed a cup of coffee and I, I love looking at books my wife and I like looking at books and I went right to the art section and I previously I, I had four years of art in high school but no art in college, I just kind of let it go for 25 years. But anyways, art always kind of intrigued me and I picked up a book entitled Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards, written in 1978. And I was amazed that I could read the book from cover to cover and not lose my attention span. I did all the exercises and I really enjoyed the book. And what also surprised me was when I finished reading that book, I would drive down my country roads on my delivery area and I was noticing things that um, I hadn't had not noticed before and Betty mentioned in this book that basically anyone can draw you just need to learn how to see so I was learning how to see and I was missing a lot of things before so I kind of I wish I would have stayed in the drawing phase a little bit longer but I kind of pushed through I wanted to get to color and watercolor right away so I did that um, my wife bought me a little uh, Reeves student grade paint set for Christmas one year and I was just having a ball painting things from books to make them look the way they were and that was all fun but uh, I wanted to learn more so I took some private lessons uh, I joined a local art group the Blue Water Art Association and started mingling with other artists and that was all very beneficial for me to grow as an artist um, and one thing I wanted to do through this process, after I, I was in this for a while, I thought I want to do more than just paint a pretty picture and hang it on the wall. I want to be passionate about my painting. And you know, like the French Impressionists. And I thought, well, how do you how do you do that? You know? So I, I looked around and found a book called Painting with Passion. And as I was reading through that book and looking at this artist's paintings, uh, it was easy for me to see that he was very passionate about his painting, but when I finished the book, nothing had really changed with me. It's kind of the same. I was a little frustrated and I thought, well, I don't know, maybe it just takes more time or more work. But um, what I was going to find out, what I was soon to find out, that um, I had actually already started painting what I was passionate about and I didn't even know it. I'll give you an example. My first uh, framed painting was entitled Time Out, and it was with our art association. It was, it was hanging in the annual show in the museum. And uh, I just remember looking at that painting from across the room and noticing the glow of the watercolor. It was a very atmospheric painting, and we'll, we'll see it later. But there's no horizon, just three sailboats just kind of parked sitting out in the lake, and a very limited palette. And I, I love that painting. And I would just remember 
talking to people at the reception and just kind of looking over their shoulder and looking at my painting because I thought, wow, I can't believe I did that. Um, but that, this, like I said, this started before I even knew that this was my passion. I'd like to read another quote from a Scottish artist named Arthur Melville. For is not the soul expressed in the design, in the color, and in the atmosphere of the whole composition? And this painting, um, by design, I didn't realize I was designing it, but there was no horizon. It was a very beautiful atmospheric painting. And uh, like I said, a limited palette, the things that I like to do, a lot of soft edges. Um, and then shortly after that, maybe a couple years after that, there was some um, writers coming through Southeast Michigan that they were writers for art magazines and the curator for the museum called a couple of uh, us artists and said, hey, can you bring in like, you know, maybe five to eight paintings? We'll set them up here. This group's coming in. They'll talk with you a little bit. You know, maybe something will happen. And so I did that. And it was the first time that I had, I had eight paintings that were framed of mine all in one place. And I was talking to this young writer and I was telling her about how I got involved in art, how busy I was and, and all this. And um, she was, this is very interesting. I mean, there was no article written on me that day and that was fine, but what happened was very beneficial for me. She basically um, pointed out to me that when I go down into my studio to paint, I want to slow things down. You know, I, I like still things. Like with, with my life being so busy, this is kind of a balance. So I even noticed in the titles of my paintings, like um, Time Out, Quiet Time, Peaceful Morning. Um, they just kind of screamed, this is, this is your passion here. You like to paint places that you like to be, you know, quiet kind of time out places. So I decided, well, that's my passion. I'll run with that. Um, and it was, it was a good thing for me also to have a series of paintings in front of me. And like I said, I had not have that. I did not have that before. Highly recommend uh, maybe doing a series to help you kind of help decide what you like to do. Um, so I decided I was going to start painting quiet atmospheric places and light was uh, very key to that. I love painting light. Um, another thing that kind of helped me on my path uh, through a different kind of um, sense was, uh, was um, classical music. And when my first daughter was born, um, we some, some people gave us these gifts of baby Bach, baby Mozart, and so we kind of play those on the TV and this background music was very nice. You know, I, I liked that. So then I started, um, I got a few CDs, I'd play them in my studio and I thought after I heard a few of these uh, symphonies a few times, I really liked them and I liked the soft flow of the music, especially like the violin. And um, it just kind of mirrored my painting in a way because I liked soft gradations of, um, one color to the next or a dark to a light. I liked soft edges, no really hard, you know, it wouldn't be like a heavy metal thing at all. So I thought that was very interesting. And then um, also I viewed um, other artists work. So you can go to museums or galleries, um, Steve Quiller. Um, Steve is a, a guy that I, I work for uh, once a year and Steve is a phenomenal painter. So if you can kind of take a look at work of other artists that you like. That's very helpful. Uh, when I go to the museum, for me, the DIA, I get right over to the, uh, like George Innes, um, the French Impressionist, the American Impressionist, love those guys, but George Innes with his soft edges and atmosphere, you know, he's one of my, one of my favorites. So one thing too, like I would, I would go to the library and check out books and DVDs. And so quite often I would, find an artist that I like, I would uh, check out a book and follow through all the exercises, do everything that artists did. And, you know, basically you would have a, a copy or a version of one of his or her paintings for yourself. And it's a good way to practice technique and to learn how other artists do that stuff. But it's, um, you know, you don't want to stay on that path that'll only carry you so far. And Steve Quiller has a quote about that, that I really like. 
It is important to recognize our differences and strengths as artists and focus on them instead of trying to paint as others do. It is important to connect to our intuition and know that these callings are inevitably, inevitably true. So basically you just need to paint, you know, what you like. And your passion will come up. So I've mentioned visually, um, I like things like smooth gradation, soft edges, the atmosphere um, look. But you know what's amazing is just because you like those things, when you pick up your brush and you go to paint, it just doesn't always happen that way, which was kind of frustrating for a while. But that's where it just takes really more time with a brush in your hand. Um, another quote by David, or yeah, by Dave, David Richards. Your painting style is a physical manifestation of your combined experiences and dedication to visual expression. And I look at that and I, th I think, you know, some people will ask you, well, how long does it take for you to do, to, to complete one of your paintings? And I think what they're looking for is from the time you started to the time you finished, you know, whatever time frame that is, if it's a smaller painting, if it's an hour, two hours, three hours or whatever. But I, but, when you when you look at this quote, you know your um, your combined experiences. I I like to think that it is. I could tell them I'm 60 years old. So it took me 60 years to make this painting. You know all my experiences growing up as a child, maybe my four years of art in high school, setting my brush down for 25 years and then picking it up again, basically to relieve some stress, and. Uh, and, and all that shows in my paintings. When I sit down to paint a quiet place, I am, I am uh, thrilled to be there. That's what I wanna do. So I got another quote from Dave Richards um, and it's about brush strokes. The decisions you make as you pull your medium in one direction and then another culminate in an artistic work that speaks of your fundamental, fundamental nature your spirit and your aesthetic sensibilities. So he's kind of talking about, uh, you know, I, when I think of brush strokes, maybe you think of heavy acrylic or oil brush strokes where you can see the texture. Um, I use watercolor most of the time and with watercolor, uh, you can do the same thing, maybe not quite as thick, but my brush strokes are, um, they symbolize what I like with the soft edges and the washes. Um, I like lifting. So I like lifting little highlights uh, that's, kind of a common thing, theme in my paintings. So another um, area to help you decide how you're gonna paint your, your personal style or um, yeah, your personal style is what, what do you paint? And I have read a quote that said, subject matter does not matter. Basically, if you're a painter, you're looking at shapes and, um, and value and composition. And that may be, partially true, but uh, what I've kind of, I mean, I, what I've found for myself is that when I paint things that I like, I tend to paint more often and I have a little more heart in them. Like I'm not a figure painter yet. Um, so some of those things are difficult. I'm not an urban painter. I, I would love to someday go downtown on the main street and, and paint the street scene, but that's just not my thing yet. So I'm not there. So I, I like painting light water reflections. I love still water, um, fishing, old fishing boats, and I have all that available to me. So that brings up a quote by John Constable. And John was a landscape painter. I should paint my own places best. Painting is but, an, but another word for feeling. And I really like that quote because I do a lot of painting right here in Port Huron. Uh, most of my paintings done here. And it reminds me of, uh, I was in a small show once at a um, store, like for an art hop, and the owner was looking through some of my paintings and we were talking and he said, you know, you are, you're doing paintings of places here that most people probably walk by every day and don't even notice. And I thought, huh, that's interesting. Um, because for me, it just seems natural, but I, that didn't happen right away. I'm constantly looking for new uh, material to paint to kind of mine it. 
Um, I could be here the rest of my life and I would have plenty of work to do. Trust me. If you find that uh, you're not, you can't find anything to paint, um, you know, maybe you need to get a little creative. I've had to do that before. Sometimes I go out and on a cloudy day thinking, ah, you know, nothing's really striking me. So I'm just going to go home and work in the studio and that's fine. But it is interesting to walk around back alleys and just when you walk around the corner, take that first look and what catches your eye. And those are the things that um, are going to help you develop your style because that's what you like. And when you start painting things like that, people are going to recognize that, oh, that's probably a Mike Henry painting because he likes to do that light coming around the corner and hitting the sides of the buildings or hitting the water just right. And um, I don't know, it's a good thing. All right, we got one more quote from Albert Camus. A person's work is nothing but the slow trek to rediscover through the detour of art those two or three great and simple images in whose presence his heart first opened. And I have really love that quote, and it's great for beginning painters and even for someone like me, I've been painting 15, 16 years. What catches your eye first? You know, the, ins the first inspiration, and quite often, I'll see something and if I'm not paying attention, I'll just start painting. And next thing you know, I, I have the paper covered with paint and you can't tell what caught my eye first because I have busyness everywhere. So I'm, I'm learning to be real careful with that and be selective. Um, I've been fairly good recently at just making my backgrounds uh, dark or light, whatever value they have to be. but very minimal detail at all and that brings your point of interest forward and um and the, I, i'll put the contrast there so i've learned a lot from that and I, I really like that quote um one last thing to talk about here is compositional lines you know we talked about uh, arthur melville talking before about is the composition part of the soul of the artist so horizontal lines represent stability vertical lines represent strength and then uh, diagonal lines are energy. And what was very interesting with me, I mean, first of all, I live in Port Huron, we have water everywhere, so a horizontal, horizontal line is dominant here um, with the lake and the rivers, and it's, it's home for me, I love that. But the first time I went to Colorado, and I'm out here painting these mountains, they're coming down on an angle, and lights coming down on an angle, and the shadows, and and the water from the Rio Grande is just rushing, and it's like, man, it was it was difficult for me. There's just a lot of energy going on, and it's a different kind of energy. And I struggled, and it, it's taken me a while to, to get that. But my home is a horizontal uh, landscape. And I'll give you a funny little um, story here that maybe you can relate to. When I was delivering packages for UPS, one of my customers was, uh, he, he used to, skate in the NHL. He played for a professional hockey team. And in my 30s, I was doing some ice skating, rollerblading, and I, yeah, so here I am delivering to him. I'm going to say, hey, you know, his name is Mike. Mike, can you give me a couple tips on, or some secret tricks on how to become a better skater, you know, so I can skate better than the guys I'm skating with. And uh, what I wanted was a shortcut. And uh, what he said was, just skate. And he turned around and walked away. <laughs> I thought, huh, interesting because people i've seen um, some of my students ask questions like that i ask questions like that how can i become a better painter how can i paint you know with passion the way i want to paint and i guess the best thing is just to paint all the time I and mean, there are a number of times before work i would go down to the river and we're just with a little five by seven or seven by nine sketchbook i may have 30 minutes so i could only concentrate on what was important to me and most times I didn't even use a pencil because I thought, man, this may be the only time I get to hold a brush in my hand today. I'm going to make it count. And I would just do everything with a brush. And I just remember showing some of my friends some of my sketches and they said, yeah, I don't see any pencil marks on there. And um, no, I wasn't really interested in that. So it was very loose, but I enjoyed it. In fact, I probably have 35 of those sketchbooks in my studio here. And um, once in a while I go through those to get ideas for larger paintings, but I could not part with those. If there was a fire in my house, I'm breaking in the basement, 
door and I'm grabbing those sketchbooks and going out. Everything else can go. I'll try and grab some photographs, but, uh, but the sketchbooks are coming with me. So that's, uh, that is, that concludes my talk on how I've developed my personal style. You know, your way may be a little different, but I am, I did bring some paintings with me to talk about th um, that and I'll describe, um, how, how my process was, the inspiration and so forth. And, uh, we'll talk to you then.